Ooh, what is up you guys and of course thank you for joining for another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly the Skyrender and today I got myself a match against the dynamic Kush uh, make sure to check him down I'm gonna link his site down below so make sure to subscribe to him he is one of the good ones and what I mean by that is that I easily put him in the same folders as Sinon, Anima, just me while he's a very very competent and a very very good battler and he was looking for a game yesterday and I really, I want to step up to the challenge, to be honest. We talked about battling before, but um, I've been somewhat busy, and the same for him. But we finally, you know, <laughs> clinched together and did this. And let me just say this, to be honest, I have a, some idea how Dynamic Cut is playing. And by that default, I really need to lure him to stay in with his Pokemon. He always go with a really, really bulky team with offensive pressure. And with that in mind, I really have need to be more defensively, to be honest. And it just force him to attack me, thinking that he's going to take me out and then retaliate. So that is my great strategy, because really, if you're looking at his team, it's very, very much based on walling each other out, which is my team, of course, too. So I just have to do it better. That's that's really the only way for me to win. And it's going to come to show that it is not that simple. Uh, he's using Kecleon, Relicant, Alteria, Arbok, Sandslash, and Rodom Fan. I'm not gone up against too many Rodan fans, but I did expect him to leave with Sand Slash to get up to Stealth Rocks. I myself was using Ride On uh, instead of Dust Dogs this time because I really needed some defensive bulk. And at the start, I will actually start off with Pangoro because I really need to get that um, <laughs> that parting shot going. Plus, I'm scarred so I can outspeed probably everything on his team besides the Kecleon, which can go for Sucker Punch as best. But then again, it will always fail, of course. So, with that in mind, guys, um, enjoy. Yeah. So, like I said there, I really thought I could outspeed him with Pangoro, but he will actually start off with the Rolling Fan. Uh, and, well, I was thinking it couldn't be Scarf 2, right? Right? I'm an idiot saying into this. Of course, it is a Scarf. And it almost takes me out, and I would never forgive myself if we'd done just that. Uh, so my Pangora is pretty much useless, it's dead farther as far as I care. So I'm gonna bring Seratul here, which is my special defensive bulk, and just go for Zoop Power. He scores a crit here, and that is... it's not unfortunate, it's frustrating, sure, but at least I get an honest chance to build up, which is what I really want to do. So I'm gonna go for another Zoop Power, and I know with that crit that Air Slash probably don't do too much, really. So Super Power, of course, won't do anything against his Alteria, very, very good choice. But, he did not expect me to pack a Rock Slide here, and I will take that Dragon Pulse fairly well. I mean, that's, that actually sincerely hurt, it really felt like that. But Rock Slide will definitely obliterate this one, so yeah, that is Alteria out of the way, and I really love him to stay. So, this thing is coming back in, and I'm like a freaking crit pinata at this point, he crits me yet again. Which means that I'm actually in no position to take him out, so I'm just gonna fight off Malamar, and it's real unfortunate. But you know, that's the game. That's really the game. So I'm gonna bring in Ride on here, because I know he's locked in, of course. So I'm gonna put up my rocks, to be honest. And Knuckles, the Sand Slash is coming in, and I really was feeling he's gonna go for a knockoff before going for an Earthquake. So I actually went for Dragon Tail to just hit him out. I miss. Of course I do. This, this is my game, I'm feeling it. So I'm gonna bring in Honey Pie, expecting the Earthquake, and then actually go for a U-turn. And I'm gonna bring in my Rhydon yet again, expecting a Stone Edge, uh, or a knockoff. And I'm actually gonna stay in with Rhydon now, thinking that he's he's not gonna fall for the same defensive tactics again. So I'm just gonna go for Dragon Dale here. He actually decides to go for the Earthquake, so I was really surprised there. He definitely went for a safer move, and I was definitely over predicting. And of course, Dragon Tail do nothing here. And, well, this is a position I'm not too fond of. Uh, I know I maybe will be able to take an Earthquake, but I really was hoping for him going for a Coil. And he goes straight for the Earthquake, and Jim... Um, I'm gonna be honest here, I had a 91% chance of living, and I barely make it with 1 HP. And I'm gonna retaliate with an Earthquake here, and it will be just enough, because Rhydon is so incredibly strong. Even with that percent boost down, He's still able to take out Arbok, and that is simply awesome, and very, very good because of the situation I were in. But then again, I my Rhydon is of course dead by now, so by default I'm going to lay the stay in here, and of course get Sash to destroy him. But this is exactly what I wanted to do, because I needed to bring in my Furthrow, 
and set up the cotton guard really and be able to or at least try to wall him out before going for a surf because I know at this range a surf is not enough to take him out even though I am especially offensive uh, I should definitely have gone for another cotton guard thinking about it because he only got physical attackers left since the Rotom is died or is gonna die by default so I should have kept that in mind really but I go for the Echoed Voice trying to set up and he's gonna bring in the Kickleon arrow and I really don't know what kind of set this is and uh, he's gonna of course go for the fake out which I didn't expect and he's gonna show me the life orb so now I know a power punch is going my way so I'm just gonna go for another Echoed Voice trying to see how much it do it doesn't really do enough and uh, really I don't know what I was thinking here I decided to go for a Cotton Guard um, instead of actually just keep going because really I have no means of dealing with this Pokemon at this stand right now and uh, I have actually yet to see the um, see the Sucker Punch. She has shadows. Uh, I was thinking it had Shadow Sneak so I was trying to preserve my Bed Fist but really uh, it doesn't really work like that and he will go for Recover putting this thing back in business and that is genuinely frustrating to be honest because I have really no means of dealing with this Kecleon, but he will decide to switch out, powdering up his uh, his Rotom, which was dead by his Stealth Rocks, of course, and I go for a knockoff, you know, I gotta get away that life, to be honest. And he will do the Fake Out combination, and it does way more than I'm comfortable with, uh, but I think I can at least take uh, Shadow Sneak, but no, he has to Sucker Punch, so he single-handedly, without my Emolga doing anything, takes it down. So now I know at least that he got the Sucker Punch, which means one thing and one thing only. I need to get my... <laughs> get this thing in here, the Go-Goat, and just bulk up. Really, really wall him out. That's that's really my only chance here, because if I don't do that, I am I have lost. Because neither my first row nor my Pangoro can take a Sucker Punch on this thing. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep bulking up, like I said there. I, I hate being this type of guy, but really, if you wanna win, then you have to do... You have to do this stuff, really, and he will recover himself up, and um, it's getting scarier by the moment, because I know I'm just a crit away from losing, worst case scenario. So I go yet for another bulk up, and he will attack me now with a power punch, and well, wow, this is so frustrating for him, uh, to be honest. He goes with power punch, he score a crit, break through my defensive boost, and it does roughly, and I say roughly 50%, and sadly, it won't be enough and uh, he will have to keep going for the power up punch and um, really I can just milk drink my way up here again and I really if I wanted to I could go on for an horn leash but I was fearing him going for a sucker punch you know who knows he might score another crit and that would be extremely frustrating so anyway I will attack him now uh, feeling that I have bulked myself up a little too much and um, yeah that's that kicked me out of the way I mean that set would check the on wow what a combination. It really, really came to show how smart the Dynamic Crush really is. And this head smash will roughly do 50% too, and it's Scarf too. Had it been a crit there, he will destroyed me. I have nothing to outspeed this thing either. So, it really, if, if it is it's, if it's, it's a 3 0, it still came down to just only if my Gogot could deal with his last Pokemon or not. Because, like I said there, both Furfro uh, and Pangora would not have been able to outspeed Relicant, nor taken a Sucker Punch from. Uh, um, Kecleon. So really, Dynamic Crush, thank you this battle, it was a really close one, I enjoyed it a lot, and it definitely came to show what a great type of battler you are. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching, make sure to check out Dynamic Crush, like I said there, this game was much closer than it looked like, like I said there, I would have not been able to take on uh, anything on his team with the one that I got left, so Gogot really pulled through, but yeah, it was a lot closer than it really looked like. So, other than that, guys, you know, thank you as all for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you're new to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky is limits. Have a good day, right? Take care. Bye.